Hello there, this is Ernie, and in my last video I discussed why we should align with the church's teachings of nearly 2,000 years and believe that Jesus was speaking literally when he said to eat his flesh and drink his blood in John chapter 6. In this video, we'll talk about why many Protestants and Catholics reject the church's teachings and how we can effectively address their mistaken beliefs. So let's begin by looking at where they might be coming from. There are three key verses within the Bread of Life discourse in John chapter 6 that many turn to as justification for their beliefs that Jesus was speaking figuratively. The first two deal with Jesus saying that we must believe in order to have eternal life. And the third, where Jesus says the flesh profits nothing. To them, that is proof that Jesus wasn't speaking literally, even though he said five different times that his flesh is true food and that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood. But that's their argument. So what is our response as Catholics? Well, the Ch Catholic Church agrees with these two verses, that we must believe in Jesus in order to have eternal life. But doesn't it make sense that if you believe in Jesus, you would then obey him? Shouldn't both be true? It doesn't have to be an either or, and it isn't. Both can be true at the same time, believe and obey. Jesus says to eat his flesh and drink his blood four different times, states his flesh and blood are the are true food and drink. And when his disciples left him because of this teaching, he let them leave because they didn't misunderstand him. He was speaking literally. So why do so many Protestants and Catholics believe but not obey? To some, I believe they just can't get out of their own way. They allow human reasoning to interfere with godly truth. They say something like, ah, it's gross to think about Jesus um, eating Jesus's flesh and drinking his blood, or the Eucharist sure doesn't look like Jesus. They act as if they should be able to understand all that God does. Sometimes we just need to let go and let God. For Jesus said the only way we can believe this hard teaching is if the Father draws us. So let the Father draw you in. Another key verse they point to is John 6:63, 6, stating the flesh profits nothing. The key here is Jesus' use of the word the rather than my. Again, the Catholic Church agrees that the flesh profits nothing, in that the flesh is our fallen sinful nature. If Jesus were talking about himself, in 663, then how would we explain the incarnation where Jesus took on flesh? No, Jesus was contrasting his flesh from the fallen flesh of man. Why else would he use the word the here and my five other times in talking about flesh? Jesus wasn't being confusing. His use of my and the word the were intentional to differentiate between him and us. And finally, why would Jesus let his disciples leave if he meant all along that the flesh, his flesh, meant nothing? It makes no sense. So what is really going on here? I believe the main reason why many Protestants and Catholics believe Jesus was speaking figuratively is because they have what is called a confirmation bias. Basically, it means a person already has made up their mind on a topic and uses only those pieces of evidence that backs up their already made up mind, ignoring any evidence that contradicts their already made up mind. Hopefully that makes sense. So before even reading John chapter six, they believe in these kinds of things. And anything that uh, supports these beliefs, uh, they will hold on to and will um, discard anything that does not agree with these already uh, made up their mind beliefs. So when we look at what was said in John chapter 6, we see this picking and choosing to prove their already made up mind. When Jesus says whoever believes has eternal life, that aligns, so they hold on to that. 
the part where Jesus says we must eat his flesh and drink his blood, well, that doesn't fit. So Jesus doesn't really mean what he says, according to that, five different times. But they cast that one out. The flesh profits nothing. It aligns, so they like that, and so they believe in that verse. The reason they don't see the distinction between his, uh, between his and between my and the is because it doesn't fit what their mind has already made up that the Eucharist is symbolic. Their bias blinds them from the truth. And knowing all of this actually helps us to make sense of kind of the mental gymnastics that many go through to get around Jesus's plain, plain teaching about the Eucharist. The bottom line for me is this. Jesus let his disciples leave for either one of two reasons. He let them leave for a first option. He let them leave even though they misunderstood him and that he wasn't speaking literally. Would you let a friend walk away from you if you knew they were doing so based on a misunderstanding? If you wouldn't, then why in the world would Jesus? Or the second option, Jesus was speaking exactly like it sounded, literally. And those that thought it was too hard of a teaching, they left. Jesus let them leave because his truth, truth itself, is more important than having believers walk away, as sad as that might seem. So the question is, will you walk away from Jesus or believe him and stay? Please stay. Fight through the tendency to use our human reasoning and instead let the Holy Spirit guide you to the truth. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb, to be nourished by the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Get on your knees, open your hearts, and let the Holy Spirit do his job. Thank you for listening. God bless you.